Today I want to share with you from the word of God under the subject in the form of a question. Where are you? Where are you? Pray with me, please. Oh, righteous God, today we open your word. Your word has life. Your word is power. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And so, I pray and ask for a double portion of the Holy Spirit to be in this place. Come alive in my heart, Lord. Speak to me, Jesus. I'm listening. And use me, I pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. I also want to welcome a friend of Pastor Lennon and a friend of mine, the Sheikhs, who is in the congregation. I'm just going to ask you to wave and welcome to the Maypen Church. And uh, I hope you will enjoy worshiping with us. Where are you? In our world today, many people are lost though they can be found. There's a paradox there. Many people are lost, though they can be found. They are here, but not here. Even some in church here today. The body is here, but the mind is on the other side of town. <laughs> The uncertainty of life have left many people confused and not sure how to proceed. Not sure which way to turn. There are those who are not sure what to believe or in what direction to go. Sometimes the way in which we see people behave, we wonder if they are sure where they are. Even in church. It may be that they lost their way like Adam did. And that's why in Genesis 3 verse 9, the Lord came to the Garden of Eden calling for Adam and asked him, Adam! Where art thou? It is important that we know who we are, whose we are, and where we are. As we stand on the beginning of a new year and in retrospect, look back at how we have progressed throughout last year. We must know where we are. When you know where you are, it gives you the drive to go forward. No doubt some of you made, may have achieved some of the goals you set for last year. Some of you may have had a good relationship. Some of you may have started tertiary studies. Or some of you may have found a boyfriend or a girlfriend that you have been searching for for the longest while. And finally, you say, yes, man, this is her. This is he. But... In all that you may have achieved in 2016, allow me to tell you that 
yesterday's experiences cannot suffice for today. So the achievements of 2016 is gone. And you are now faced with a new year. Where are you as it relates to your relationship with God? Are you still on board the ship, the old ship of Zion? Moving on? Or has the ship left you behind? Wallowing and enjoying the successes of 2016, but without God. Our scripture reading which you shared in. And by the way, your assignment is to read in chapter chapter. From verse 1 through to 44 of Acts chapter 27. The apostle Paul was now a prisoner. A prisoner for Christ. And he had appeal to go before Caesar. Which meant he had to go to Rome. While on his way. A problem developed. First of all, the time that they set out to go to Rome was a bad time to travel. It was between September and November. Coming on to the cold time, the winter period. And according to the weather forecasters, it was not good to travel at that time. Although it was a cargo ship, it was customary for them to carry passengers. And they had on board 276 passengers, inclusive of crew. Some of these passengers were prisoners. And there were soldiers on board also to guard the prisoners. One of these prisoners was Paul, the apostle. Before long, when you read the story, you'll find out that problems started developing. Paul, although he was a prisoner, he was well respected as a man of God. And so, he was vocal. He told them, he told the commander, listen, don't set sail. If you set sail, you will be in trouble. There will be loss of life and property if you set sail. But they did not listen to Paul. They started out. They started out and the Bible tell us that for 14 days they struggled to stay alive and to stay on board the ship. No doubt there were different religions on board. They believed in different gods and so they prayed to their God. But Paul and his companions they prayed to the true and living God. Problems arisen. It is said that at certain tempests developed, causing the ship to toss to and fro. But you know, the story said, as the 14 days come to a close, suddenly the fearless Apostle Paul, the Apostle of God, appear. It's amazing. What can happen in the presence of God's anointing? It's amazing. What will happen when on board there are people of God? It's amazing the miracles that can be wrought when 
God is in our life. The devil caused the storm to rage. My wife will tell you that she don't like sea. And for a long time now I've been trying to get her to go on a cruise. She don't like that. Because when she look there she don't see anything to hold on to. Can you imagine on board the ship the tempest is raging. It seems that any time now this ship is going to go under. But Paul was on board. And God had promised Paul that if you want to go before Caesar, I'm going to take you before Caesar. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand if God says, I'm going to save you, he's going to save you. So Paul was confident that although the storm was raging, he was not going to go under. God would protect him. Satan can bring about confusion. Satan can create havoc in the church. Satan can cause folks to lie on us. But bite us. Satan can cause people to stop tithing and stop supporting the church for foolishness. Satan can try to run the pastor down. Satan can try to destroy the confidence of the members. Satan can try to break up families, to break up homes, and to break up churches. Satan can cause a storm to rage in your life and to make you think that you are worth nothing. But I want you to understand today, like Jesus told Peter, up on this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. As you embark upon 2017, brothers and sisters, as this old ship of Zion rages across planet earth. I want you to understand that our anchor must be grounded. Ellen White stated that though this church may be feeble and insufficient, it is on this church that God has bestowed its supreme regard. No matter how you see this church raging in storm or is caught on fire, be assured that God will see us through. Sometimes, just when we think we have weathered the storm, when we see things not going our way, there comes more storm and more storm and more storm. But I want you to read the chapter because I didn't want, I, the scripture lesson didn't capture this. But when you read it, you will notice that what happened is that there came a time on the ship when they had to lighten the ship. They had to throw out some food and other equipment. Church of the living God. There is going to come a time when this church will have to lighten its load. Some of us have too many baggages carrying. 
weigh down God's church. I want you to know that as the storm rages, let go. Throw them overboard. Some of us have some bad mind we need to throw overboard. Some of us have some cantankerous ways we need to throw overboard. Some of us, everything trouble us. If I fly past, it trouble us. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. In 2017, as we look forward to the kingdom, release them, throw them overboard. Look to Jesus who is author and finisher of our faith. And no matter the challenges that come our way, hold on to Jesus. It was Sir Winston Churchill who spent three years in eighth grade. After he became successful and popular, he was invited to be the commencement speaker at Oxford University. After he was introduced, Winston Churchill stepped up to the podium. The audience waited with bated breath, listening to this great man about to orate, to speak. Mr. Churchill looked at them and blurted out, Never give up! He paused. Never give up. He paused. I say, never give up. It is said that he turned around, picked up his cane, put his hat on his head, and walked away. I say to Maypen Church, you will be bombarded on every side. But never, never give up. I know some of you have some pet peeves carrying. Throw it overboard. You know the story is told. <clears throat> about an airline pilot. Traveling. Shortly after the aircraft took off. A passenger called one of the stewardess over and said, listen, I hear something in the interior of the plane. The stewardess listened and sure enough, she heard it too. Amidst the noise of the, air, of the airline engine, she heard it. And she came to the conclusion, like the passenger, that a rodent was in the interior of the plane. Now that could be dangerous. The rodent could gnaw at the wires and could cause problems. The stewardess, not knowing what to do, went to the cabin and went to the pilot. She said to the pilot, Sir, we have a problem. And she stated the problem. It seems like they are rodent in the interior of the plane. The experienced pilot looked at her and said, Don't worry, I'll take care of it. But he didn't move. She was puzzled. How is it? He's going to take care of it. And he did not move. But then, he started to climb higher. He was at 20,000 feet. He climbed to 25,000 feet. But there was still the sound. The road end was still gnawing at the wires in the plane. The pilot moved from 25,000 feet 
to 30,000 feet. The noise didn't stop, but it started to cool down. He moved from 30,000 to 35,000 feet. And suddenly, the noise stopped. The stewardess was concerned. How is it? So she went back to the cabin. She said, tell me, captain. I noticed you didn't get up from your chair. All you did was climb higher. The captain looked around at her with a smile and said, my sister, you need to understand the higher you climb, rats can't live up there. I come to tell somebody today, there may be rumors going about you in the church. There may be those who are backbiting and finding fault of you. You don't know where to turn because it is gnawing on the inside of your heart. I have a message for you today. Start climbing higher. Rats can't live up there. The higher you climb, the closer you come to Jesus. Don't let nobody take your peace. Don't let nobody get you upset. Look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Because the truth be told, we are all marching to Zion. Some of us lazy, but we marching still. Some of us still have some illnesses, but we marching still. Some of us still drinking a little liquor, but we marching still. Some of us have somebody on the side, but we marching still. We all marching to Zion, and one of these days, he who should come will come. But I pray, heaven, that you are transformed before he comes. I say rats can't live up there. The apostle Paul <clears throat> told them. He said, listen, with all the storm that raging, don't jump overboard. Stay in the ship. Wonder if you hear the pastor today. I said, with all the storm that raging, stay in the ship. Don't let nobody push you out of God's church. Keep on board. God, the truth is out there. You will be lost. Stay in the ship. Even if you have to change seat. But stay in the ship. Paul said to the men on board. You are only safe when you are in the ship. Or God tell us. That there will be no loss of life for those who are on board. But there's no guarantee for those who jump ship. You may come to church today. And you haven't been here for a long time. Because you jump off somewhere down the road. Listen. Get back on board. Get back on board. And stay in the ship. That's the only way you're going to be saved. The story went on to say. That as they came closer to land. The storm battered the ship so much. That we're, there were some broken pieces. Allow the preacher this morning to play with that. Because you must understand that in the old ship of Zion, some of us are only going to be saved on broken pieces. If God didn't give us the cancer, hell wouldn't miss us. We are going to be saved on broken pieces. If God never gave us the office of elder, 
Hell would not miss us. But because we get the office of elder, we know we have to live a certain way. We will be saved and broken pieces. Our brokenness has caused us to run to Calvary every minute. And today I want you to ask yourself the question, where am I? Where are you today in the church of God? Where are you? It's a new year. Spiritually, where are you? Last year, we could point finger at you and say, yes, man. If you want somebody to criticize you, check sister so and so. Where are you this year? Have you moved on? Where are you? You must understand, brothers and sisters, that Jesus wants to save you. And I told you this the other day, that Ellen White states that anyone who wants to be saved will be saved. Don't think you came here by chance. God plant you here. Don't leave here. Bloom where you are planted. Today, I want you to know that God sent his only begotten son so that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Psalm 40, tell us patiently, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon rock. Psalm 37, tell us, fret not thyself. Because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut off down like the grass. And with wither as the green herb. Psalm 23. The Lord will always be my shepherd. And Psalm 27 tell us. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. And Psalm 46 says, the Lord is my refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Say John 14, say, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Brothers and sisters, where are you today? In the church of God, spiritually, where are you? I leave you to answer that question with this story. <clears throat> it is said that this father worked in America and his job was to be up On a pedestal where he could see the ship passing by, the train running on the rail. The job that he had was an awesome one, a dangerous one. 
at different moments of the day. He was expected to pull a lever. When the ship would pass by. And the bridge would open up. So that the ship could have safe passage. It was this same bridge that a train would run on. So therefore, he would lower the lever and the bridge would come back into play. And some of you who travel know what I'm talking about. Or you may have seen it on television. So that the train, the passenger train, would travel safely across. On this given day, the father took his son with him to work. While they were up there, in his little cot, His son asked him, Daddy, can I go down and play? The father decided to allow the boy to go down to play. But he warned him. He said, listen, stay in my eyesight. Stay where I can see you. On either side, he had windows. And so the boy's son went on. The father could see him through the window. It was not the first time that he had accompanied his dad to work. He knew the ropes. He knew what his father did. And there he was playing away. Each time the father would look over to make sure that he was in his eyesight and that he was okay. Before long, it was time for the bridge to rise. The father looked out and he could see The ship coming by. It was coming slowly along. And it was blowing so as to notify him. But somehow while the boy was playing, he stopped. Because he was sure he heard something. The father pulled up the lever so that the, the ship could have safe passage. As the ship got closer, the bridge parted. It opened up. On the left, on the right, it opened up. The father continued to look out at his son while keeping an eye on the ship. It opened up. But by now the boy heard the sound and it was the sound of the train. The ship was coming along. The noise from the ship. The father didn't even hear that the train was coming. But he did not expect the train at that time. Because according to schedule, it was not yet time for the train to arrive. The boy kept waving. By now the ship was midway into the, where the bridge would have been. And the boy kept waving to his dad and shouting, Daddy! 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 
ready. The train is coming. But the noise of the liner caused the father not to hear what was happening. He kept shouting, Daddy, Daddy, the train is coming. But he was more focused on this ship going through, taking his eyes off his son, watching the ship go through. The boy, recognizing that his father didn't hear him, decided that he had to do something. He knew that there was an emergency lever somewhere on the ground that normally, in case of emergency, they would pull to put back the bridge in place. He tried to help out his father. He ran to the little trap door where that emergency lever was. He with all the strength he could muster, remove the trap door. His father, all this time, watching the ship as it slowly passes through. The boy reached down. His little hands weren't long enough, and so he had to reach way down. As he reached down, he slipped. He slipped and fell in. By now, the last of the ship had crossed. The father turned. To look for his son. His son was not there. He then heard the sound of the train. The horn from the th train was so deafening. But where is his son? As he looked out over in front, he recognized what had happened. The trap door was removed. And just as he had thought, his son had fell in. The bridge was still up in its vertical position. The train with passengers, a few hundred passengers, was steaming along. Expecting that by the time it reaches to the bridge, the bridge would be in place so that they could travel along. The father was confused. His son was in danger. But so were many people. He didn't have the time to run down to try to save his son and pull him and then pull the lever. There was not enough time. He must make a decision. What must he do? Save his son? And kill the people? Or save the people? And kill his son? As the tears welled up in his eyes. It starts to roll down his cheek. On board that train, there were warmongers. On board that train, there were drinkers. On board that train, there were womanizers. There were gamblers. There were drugs addicts. On board that train, and in that little hole where the gears were, was his son. He held on to the lever. What must I do? Save my son? And cause these people to die. Or kill my son and save the people.
the sound of the train coming closer interfered with his thoughts. And then he made that decision. He pulled it. Crying with agony, he pulled it. The gears started to go in motion. That little bo lad's body started to grind. The bridge started to fall in its horizontal position so that the train could go through safely. The father cried out in agony as he heard the scream of his boy. As the train reached to the bridge that was now in place, it hurried along. Looking through his window, he saw people laughing. People having a good time. There was this lady, the, the story said, who caught his eyes and she was just about to have another fix. And somehow when she saw the agony on this man's face. She decided against it. The boy died. The father gave his son. To save. Wretch like you and me. Oh, brothers and sisters, visiting friends, I want you to understand that this earth is like that runaway train. Because of sin, earth was on a collision course with eternal death. The bridge was up and we were having a good time. We party, we laugh, we backbite, we are drug addicts, you name it. Having a good time, we believe. But God send his son. He sent his son to die so that we can have life today. And because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow. This afternoon, as I made the call, and you consider where you are, I want to pray for you. Jesus doesn't want to pass you by in 2017. 569. But you must determine what you want for your life. Where are you today? Are you safe in Jesus' arms? Or... Are you on the other side? I want to pray for you. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. You are here today. This might be your first time in a long time in church. You have not yet accepted Jesus, but you're thinking about it. You want to change your life for 2017. You recognize that there is nothing in this world to hold you. You need Jesus. Come. Let us pray for you. 569. Come. Begin the process to give your heart to Jesus.
Praise the Lord, brother. Pass me not, O oh Jen. He's calling you. A simple call. Begin the process today. Shake my hand, brother. Praise the Lord. I invite the congregation to stand. I invite Pastor Lennon to join me. Save. Yes. He's willing to hear your cry. Where are you today? Are you at the right place? Spiritually, can Jesus be proud of you? Shake my hand, brother. Find a sweet relief. Kneeling there. Help my unbelief. Savior, somebody else need to walk. Somebody else need to come. Hear my humble cry. Today, today, Jesus is calling you. He's saying, come, come my child. Give me a heart. I'll give you my father's kingdom. Trusting only in thy merit would I seek thy face. The call is going out today. Heal my wounded. That's what he wants to do. That's what he wants to do. And then save me by thy grace. Somebody else need to walk. Savior. Savior. Hear my heart. While on others, thou art calling. Though the spring of all my comfort, more than life to me. Whom have I on earth beside thee? Whom in heaven but thee? Savior. Yes. Call upon him. Hear my humble cry, Lord. While on others thou art calling. Please, Jesus, do not. Just before Pastor Lennon pray for us. You know, some of us have been on this road for a long time. Spiritually. We have not grown the way we thought we should have. 2016 saw us decided that we would change some things, but 2017 has found them with us. 
just the same. But you want to say, Lord, take these things from me and make me better. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. As we sing the chorus one more time, then pastor is going to pray for us. Savior, Savior. And others thou art calling. Please do not pass me by. Do not pass me by. Oh, Heavenly Father, we have listened to your words today. And didn't our hearts burn within us? And so we want to give you thanks. We want to glorify you. Because you spoke to us directly. Father, many of us are running from you. But you have reminded us that it's a new year. New resolution, new things. You said if anyone be in Christ, is a new creature. Behold all things. In the past have gone and we have become new. And so, Father, those who are lingering, I pray today that they will come out of the valley of indecision and they will come to Jesus. I pray for the members of this church. I pray, Father, that we may take stock of our lives, knowing that your coming is very, very near. And so we need to live a godly life. I present these individuals at the altar before you. Oh, Father, this is not a normal walk. It is coming forward. It is showing us that they want to make a solemn decision for Jesus. It is a turning point in their lives. And so I put them into your hands at this moment. I pray that you will seal them for time and for eternity. I pray you will prepare them, Heavenly Father, because soon and very soon you are coming, and we want them to go home with you. Bless their family members. Lift them up, Heavenly Father. Worry their consciences, and may, as they leave from this altar, they will have that word. They will have you and the Holy Spirit working in their lives, and they will turn over to you. Father, we thank you for this message today. We thank you for what you're about to do for us in 2017. We thank you for the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we pray, Father, that we will be ready to meet you when you shall come. Because none of us know when you will be coming. So bless us now. And as we go one from another, we pray your Holy Spirit will go with us. And will keep us. And will provide for us. And so we'll come back to worship you again. We say thanks in Jesus' holy name. We want to give God thanks and praise today. You may be seated. For those who came forward, I want to encourage you. Give Jesus a chance to reign supreme in your life because there's no God like our God Jehovah. God bless you. Please stand for the benediction. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Lord, with blessings we pray, as from thy worship we on the way, guide in our foot. With soul to thy breast, safe in thy kingdom, guide me, I pray. Amen. 
blir besitter.